what God's house looks like. The reading today says God brings good news to the oppressed. It needs a tall tower and a megaphone to shout the good news so everyone can hear it. God's good news is for everyone, especially those who are struggling. It says that God binds up the brokenhearted. So the sad faces are replaced with happy ones. When our hearts are broken, God's love comforts us and makes us whole. God proclaims liberty to captives and Releases of prisoners. People feel trapped by lots of things. God sets us free. We can live free every day as children of God. God proclaims the year of the Lord's favor. 
This has been a hard year, but there have been lots of blessings too. People are helping one another and reaching out to one another, appreciating time together. Oh, and cinnamon rolls during online church. There we go, God's house, where God brings good news to the oppressed, binds up the brokenhearted, proclaims liberty to captives, and release to the prisoners, and proclaims the year of the Lord's favor. Now, if we could just figure out how to do that with our hearts. Good morning, I'm Judy Dixon. Welcome to worship. Good morning and welcome to Faith Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Adam Dixon and it's a joy to have you here with us. Today we are in our third Sunday of Advent and we have a number of Advent announcements for you. Remember our Advent bar here in the church building? We have a whole selection of different ways for you to be involved in Advent this year. You can pick up a wooden block to decorate. They're not just for kids, uh, they're for all of us to have a reminder of God coming to make a home with us in Jesus Christ. Here are some that some adults in our congregation have made as well. Also pick up your Taking Faith Home devotional guide, Advent wreath and candles, and a box, uh, a piggy bank, uh, to collect money for our reverse Advent project as we raise money for the St. Vincent de Paul organization here in town that provides housing assistance to people in need. Also, uh, our Advent Allegro concerts are up and going. We've had two already with Anna and Bethany Ferraro and Fiona Shea. Those are online. You can watch them anytime that you'd like. This week's concert on Wednesday at noon is with the Jacksonville High School Choirs under the direction of our very own Jacob Smetters. So be sure to tune in and join us for that concert. Wednesday nights, we continue to have our Advent evening prayer services. Tune in at 7 o'clock or watch one anytime that you're available. This year, our Christmas services are all going to be online only. And they'll premiere at a certain time, but then you can watch them any time after that during the day, whatever works with your Christmas schedule. So on Christmas Eve, we have a nativity drama at noon, a concert at 1.30, and our traditional candlelight and communion service at 2 o'clock. Be sure to set aside some bread and wine or juice if you'd like to participate in communion, or come by the church and pick up, pick up a pre-wrapped uh, cup of grape juice and bread for communion. And also have a candle with you so that you can join in the carol sing. On Sunday, on a Christmas Day, sorry, the 25th of December at 9.30, we'll have our Christmas Day service as well. One more thing to prepare for our carol sing on Christmas Eve, we'd like to invite you to a special Zoom recording. On Thursday night, December 17th, we'll be having an online Zoom gathering where you can sing and we will record the carols that we'll use on Christmas Eve. Call the church office for more information about how you can participate in this carol sing. Well, again, thank you for joining us for worship today. And may God be with us all on this third Sunday of Advent. Savior of the nations, come. 
We gather in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Advent, we gather in our homes. And the world is not as you intended it to be. And we pray that you would come. Come, restore what is broken, and make your home among us. This Advent, we gather in our homes. And we prepare a path for you to come. Our homes are poor reflections of your eternal kingdom. Call us to action as we prepare the way for you. This Advent, we gather in our homes. And we proclaim your good news. You have come to be a home for all the nations. Help us to be your hands and feet that bring your good news to all. This Advent, we gather in our homes. And we become a home for you. Your home is not built of wood and bricks, but of flesh and blood. Come, make us your home and dwell within us. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As the bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as the bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what it is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wait, 
it, Jeff. Wait, I was just kidding. I didn't mean to do this to okay. <laughs> But what, what are you reading, Mama G? I'm reading good oh, news yeah. from the Faith Family Newsletter. Oh, yeah, let me see. Let me see. Can I read? Yeah. yeah. Well, what is that word? But I think today's lessons mean? talk about the good news of Jesus coming. Oh, really? Yeah. He's, where is he coming? I still don't know. I'm so excited. Oh. Pretty oh. soon. Two more Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. That's some good news. What do you think, Tom? Do you think that's good news? Yeah. It's good news for everybody. Yeah. That's good news. It, it doesn't good. matter if you're on the naughty list no. nope. or the good list. No. Jesus comes with good news for everybody. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Oh, that's exciting. Well, do you think we can pray? I think so. All right. Let's everybody, pray. fold your hands. Dear God, Dear God, God, thank you for good news. Thank you for good news. Help us to share it with others. Help us to share it with others. Amen. Amen. Oh, all right, I gotta go check that list one more time. Is we anybody take else on the you? list? Uh, you give uh, this to somebody? No, you can read it. Okay. You can pass it. All right. All right. Bye. All right, have a wonderful rest of the sermon. All right, bye. bye. Everybody have a great week. Spread some good news. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you ever wish you had a redo? You know, a redo, a chance to do something differently, to try something again for a second time. Back when I was a student, the night after an exam, I would always wish I could go back and answer something differently. As a trumpet player, I would wish I could go back to a concert and play a piece differently. As a pastor, I'm recording the sermon on Wednesday, and by Sunday, when I'm worshiping with you online, I always wish I had said something differently. And I mean, you've seen the worship outtakes, right? There are plenty of times we need redos. We all want second chances, times when we can change something that we did or something that we said. Apparently, God does as well. That's right, in Genesis 6, we hear the story of one of God's great redos, the flood. The earth had grown corrupt with sin and was filled with violence, so God decided on a divine do-over by sending a global flood. Noah was a righteous man, and so God chose Noah and instructed him and his family to build an ark and gather two of every living thing. Noah built the ark, God sent the rain, and for 40 days and 40 nights, a really long time, they drifted at sea, waiting for the flood waters to recede. When they finally did, Noah and his zoo returned to land and followed God's command to be fruitful and multiply. God then made the promise to never bring such destruction to earth again. And to remind God's self of the promise God made, God put a rainbow in the sky, a bow with no arrow, to show that God will never again revert to such violence. If the idea of God Almighty needing a divine do-over troubles you, or if the idea of God wiping out nearly all of life on earth troubles you, it may be helpful to hear this story as an etiology. Biblical etiologies are narratives written to help make sense of the way things are in a way that connects us and our story to God. They typically aren't overly concerned with historical facts, but focus on giving meaning to a truth that we all experience. Genesis is full of these. Men and women leave their homes and cling to one another because woman was formed out of man's rib. Childbirth is painful because of God's curse to Eve. Farming is hard work because of God's curse to Adam. Snakes have no legs and slither on the ground because of God's curse to serpents. These narratives help us make sense of the way things are in ways that affirm God's power and authority over all creation. So back to the flood. Much research, exploration, and biblical debate has taken place to prove the historicity of the flood, and all that is well and good. But what is of greater importance is to explore what the story is telling us. The story is telling us that humanity was corrupted by sin to the point of violence against ourselves, one another, and God. This wasn't the way God intended for things to be, and it broke God's heart. God's heart broke to the point of wanting to change, wanting it to start over. But God's love was so great that God found a way for life to continue and then promised to never again cause such a cataclysmic event to happen. If sin would someday, somehow, creep back into the world, 
If there would ever be a need for another divine do-over in the future, God would have to find another way. Well, spoiler alert, sin did continue in the world. But instead of a do-over, God found another way. In place of the redo came redemption. Our Isaiah readings these past three weeks tell of the Israelites crying out to God, pleading with God to redeem them, to bring them back from exile and restore them to a right relationship with God and others. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, they cried out from Isaiah 64 two weeks ago. And from last week in Isaiah 40, in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord. Make a pathway in the desert. Come on, God. It's not a do-over we're asking for, but we're begging you for your presence. Come. Come fix what is broken. Come redeem what is lost. So, no chance for another divine do-over. So, what would God do? Well, then comes our reading for today. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. These are the words of the prophet Isaiah, but they are the living word of God. Prophets are mouthpieces for God, to share the word of the Lord with others. Isaiah was proclaiming that God was coming. Redemption was near, and it wasn't just for the house of Israel, but for all nations. God was coming to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to comfort those who mourn and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The Israelites came home from Babylon. They rebuilt Jerusalem and the temple. God was with them, but sin persisted. No redo this time. Instead, the living word of God was spoken in a new way. From John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word became flesh and made a home among us a home for all nations. The living word of God came, not for a redo, but for redemption. God took on flesh to live, die, and rise again, to overcome the power of sin once and for all, and to make a home, a home for all nations. But sin persisted, and still persists today. Sin has been defeated, its power stripped because of God's promise of salvation, but its stain still lingers. Look at our own nation and the nations around the globe. There are so many who are oppressed, brokenhearted, captive, prisoners, and those who mourn. We have a promise that the living word will speak triumph when Christ returns, but the living word is speaking today as well. The living word speaks as we acknowledge that the spirit of the Lord that was on Isaiah is the same spirit of the Lord that was on Jesus and is the same Spirit of the Lord that is on us. We have good news to proclaim. We have broken hearts to bind up. We have captives to free and prisoners to release. Even in this crazy year, yes, even in 2020, we have seen abundant blessings of God's favor, and we have thanks to give. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you so that everyone would know that Jesus Christ, the living word of God, has come. Jesus has come to be a home for all nations. Amen.
Listening together in trust and hope, we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly into this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of creatures and messengers, you've entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen all human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service and the work we do together for those seeking a new home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need, especially those we name before you now. Lord, make our church a place of refuge and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved, imperfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Thank you for worshiping with us today, and I look forward to seeing you at all the wonderful other Advent activities we have going on, Advent Allegro, Advent Evening Prayer, and our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day worship services. Remember, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Proclaim good news. God has come to make a home for all nations. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Run.